Hello, my beautiful people. Welcome to the next 2020 segment with me, Raphael from Radiant Reality. It's an absolute pleasure to have you. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for joining me. If you haven't already, please don't forget to like, share, and if you should so choose and this resonates with you, hit that subscribe button. If you are already a continued subby, you know I love you for it. Um, so this is the video that so many of you have asked me to make. Uh, questions galore, lots of people have shown uh, an interest in this topic and, and wanted me to kind of delve into it. So I really hope that I can do it justice and a few things for me to mention before we go forward uh, and I start to disseminate. <laughs> such a cool word, right? <laughs> Sorry, I'm such a dork, you guys know that. Um, the, yeah, before I start to give this, I will say this uh, until I'm blue in the face, but I feel the need to continually mention it because otherwise it seems to leave things open for interpretation. My views, my opinions, my thoughts, my feelings, my expression, my understanding of the work that I do, the arena that I'm in, and the sector that I choose to call my own, you know, the spiritual sector, so to speak. Um, Everybody has their own ways of working. Everybody has their own ways of doing things. This is not, this video isn't about me saying this is the way that it works and everybody else is wrong. It really isn't about that. And I think if you're already coming from that place, my work is never going to be for you because that's not my place. That's not my energy. I choose not to be a part of that kind of uh, divisive thinking. I only ever give things that are supposed to be thought provoking, that make people think, that make them go and do their own research and look things up. Like I am not above learning from other people. There's been so many times people have said things in the comments to me and I'm like, wow, you know what, I'm taking that on board because it speaks to me. That is the way that you, you build and grow your practice by being open to change, by being open to maybe learning that you're wrong, maybe learning that you are right, maybe, you know, all of this sort of stuff. And so before I go off on another tangent, that's probably for a different video, um, let's get back to it. So I've got my trusty little stick man here and I was kind of just settled on drawing stick men now because as many of you know, I know you love me for all of my talents, but one of them is not drawing, um, you know, as you can see. So <laughs> with that said, let's go into it. So uh, a few things to mention, I've got literally pages of notes here, so it looks like it might be a, a big video and I apologize for the waffling, right? So I'm gonna go into this stuff uh, in a bit, but there's a few things that I need to get across. So human beings, what are we? We're mammals, right? No matter how highly evolved, uh, you know, all the fact that we have the power of speech, animals speak, animals know how to speak for those that know how to listen. Uh, through various different means, but mostly energetic and, you know, if you get to that point, then telepathic as well. Um, so, you know, but as human beings, we have this gift of speech, we have this gift of being able to self-reflect, of looking outside of stuff, but at base level, at base physical human level, we are mammals, right? And um, which means that our physical senses have limits, right? All, all animal, and this is the thing, when you see the animal kingdom, their senses are finely tuned, you know, like they can smell something, you know, hundreds of feet, meters or whatever away, and you know, they can taste scents in the water, and it's interesting, that's a really interesting one too. Um, I can taste the rain, and I probably sound like a complete Fruit Loop saying that, but I said this year I would be a lot more open about who I am, what I'm about, and you know, all of that sort of stuff, but Yes, um, it's a phenomenon that a lot of my friends, family have always kind of said that's just one of his really weird quirks. I don't know why, it's like you can just, there's like a a misty sort of taste in the air and I'm like, okay, it's gonna rain, <laughs> you know? Um, so, I mean, it's fun, right? It's really, really interesting. So our base five senses, touch, taste, smell, sight, sound, these are the things that are uh, naturally, innately born into us, right? Our physical senses. And um, ultimately, uh, you know, our hearing, we have 3D hearing as human beings, which is amazing, right? Our uh, sight, however, no matter how keen or powerful it is, even people that have like 20 20 vision, it's very, very limited. I mean, you think about the spectrums of things that we can't see. I think out of the whole 100%, we see like, is it like five to 
you know, our eyes can pick up that. So imagine what else is happening elsewhere, right? That we can't see with the naked eye. This always, that, that kind of thought always reminds me of, you know, in Lucy, if you haven't seen it, watch it, brilliant. Um, where she's doing this with the radio waves and she's picking them out. You know, and to go into that, actually, that leads me quite nicely into the next point. Um, so, you know, these are our, our physical senses, the things that we have to do with our mammalian body, so to speak. Um, and, you know, they're really powerful. We have wonderful, amazing senses, you know, but they have their limits, ultimately. And this is where I believe that the psychic, spiritual, intuition, all the rest of it takes over. It's just a natural extension of all of the, the physical senses that we have. We have more senses, but the rest of them kind of go out of the, the physical, tangible energy and into the realm of frequency. Uh, so one thing that I put here as well is I predict a time in the future where all peoples will have very developed psychic and intuitive capabilities and they will work within medical fields. I don't know why, I just get this sense that this is a big part of where we're heading as a race. Like a lot of people say, oh no, you know, it's probably going to be cybernetically enhanced human beings. Well, how about we just take what we've already got and develop that to an amazing extent without having to tinker with it, you know, with technology and, and all the rest of it. And I'm not saying, technology has its place. You know, when you think about a pacemaker, when you think about the nanotechnology that's being delivered to help people, you know, on the, on the internal level, in places that can't be operated on, you know, without causing severe damage and stuff, it has its place and that stuff is beautiful. I think it's amazing that we've been able to do that. But how about instead of kind of just going completely off the off on the technological deep end, we just really discover and uncover all of the true abilities and senses that we have innately born into us as human beings. And I'm always reminded of this. There was a show um, when I was at, in, in high school, or um, we call it secondary school here. And um, in that show, it was a show called Roswell, really interesting. It was about, you know, aliens who had come to Earth and they all had these amazing abilities. And one day, um, one of the main characters was speaking to somebody who's from their planet. And um, he says, you know, wh wh where do we get these gifts from? Like, is everybody like us? And the person actually says to him, the things that you can all do, all of you people, aliens that have come down, all the rest of it, they're all human. They're just super advanced to what your current level is at. And that really stuck, you see, I got goosebumps as, I, as I'm saying this, and that really stuck with me because I thought, yeah, you know, there's people that already demonstrate super amazing abilities that just are mind blowing, right? Uh, in this day and age, imagine what we could do if we really gave credence to this stuff and developed it properly. It would be phenomenal. Um, so, big question, is there a difference between intuition and psychic ability? Absolutely, and I want to get into that because um, then obviously I've got my list here. So your number one list, these are your physical senses that are housed within the body, right? Your number two, this is about your aura, your energy, your psychic, spiritual, astral uh, self, body, information, all the rest of it. Um, and, you know, actually as a side tangent there, uh, you know, they've discovered that we exchange millions of pieces of information through these energetic fields every second, you know, like things that we're not even, you know, aware of. So it stands to reason then that you have these, right? And the, the difference I personally feel between intuition and psychic ability, uh, yes, it is in, it's, um, so what I put here is, in, uh, yes, in that everyone is intuitive to a degree, and no, in that not everyone has trained or focused their intuition to be able to direct it, to gain the knowledge or information that they're actually looking for. And that's something to really consider, right? We all have intuition. We've all, um, you know, I'll go into that list in just a second. So using intuition on purpose or directing it to know a specific thing, that is psychic ability. That is where you are, you know, and some people say being psychic is about, is, is being able to see or know things that you couldn't know through any other means, right? It's that sort of, almost like a download of information that comes into your being and you know this, you know, like, 
people know things from hundreds, thousands of miles away. You know, when you hear these phenomena of people know when their loved ones had an accident or, you know, they know that person is pregnant before they even call them to say like, oh, you know, you're going to be a, a mother or you're, you're going to a grandmother or, you know, an uncle or whatever. Um, me and my mum both did that to my sister. She was like, you need to sit down. And we were like, no, you need to sit down. When are you due? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and and it really is like that in my family. It's, it's uh, very exciting um, and also a little bit weird. Um, it's really funny. I'll give you an example. Uh, dreaming is probably one of my most potent psychic abilities or gifts. Um, I've often dreamt the future since I was around 11 years old now. Um, and I had a dream probably about two years ago and I told my partner about it and the next day uh, his best friend phoned him up and said oh you know this this and this is happening and he was like I was like that's really cool right and he was like yeah but it's also a little bit creepy <laughs> um so you know you you on this path you will always be surprised. You will always um, have moments that are shocking, uh, wonderful, beautiful, um, surprising, you know, astounding. And the day that I stop being surprised, humbled, astounded by this work will be the day that I stop doing it. That will be, you know, for me when I can kind of say, okay, uh, it's no more. But anyway, again, side tangent, I told you it's gonna be a long video. Uh, so, um, a few key points to understand. Everybody, providing that the faculties are intact, can run, right? So we can all run. How fast we can run, how far we can run, what our endurance looks like, depends on a few things. Um, you know, Usain Bolt is really tall and has really long legs, but is also very fast, right? There's a whole combination of things taking place there. So when I talk about the faculties being present, um, we can all run, right? How far, how fast, uh, how good you are at it, how uh, you know able you are with technique and all the rest of it. This is kind of what comes down to, you know, whether you want to call it genetics, whether you, whether you want to call it natural selection, all of that sort of stuff. Um, and that really kind of is it, you know, this is the, the stuff that we, we need to consider when we're talking about intuition and psychic ability. So first things first, take the word intuition, right, and split it in two. In tuition, inner learning, right? This is something that is inside you already, right? And you can see this in animals and mammals. Um, you know, they have that sort of almost sixth sense like energy because they're not just relying on their senses. They're also, they don't question whether there's energy and whether we can pick that up because they're doing it all the time. It's a natural extension of who they are or what they are. And they understand that better than we do. We seem to have kind of gone backward with it. Um, you know, which is why it's really nice to see that this stuff is kind of, uh, you know, having a revival, so to speak. Uh, as instinctual creatures who, like sentient beings, care about survival or crave survival, our intuition tells us who or what not to trust or to look out for. And this brings me on to the list, right? How many times, and, and I know pretty much everybody watching this video will have all had moments like this. I felt, you know, you couldn't explain it, but you felt something and you knew kind of what that meant to you. Uh, your gut sense, you know, like I just knew I wasn't supposed to go around that corner and then a car comes flying out of nowhere. Um, you know, I knew that I shouldn't have accepted the ride from that stranger and then something awful happens. But it also happens with other things as well. Like, you know, you know, and this is the thing, one of the things that a lot of people struggle with, especially when they're new to the path, is because it comes in all of these kind of odd sensations sometimes. It's like, oh, you know, does this mean something bad's gonna happen? Sometimes it could be that you're about to get a letter that tells you, you know, you've got money on your way, or, you know, a loved one's gonna win some money, or they get a promotion, or sometimes it's that that you're intuiting, and obviously this is where the training and the dedication over time comes in to help you understand what your personal triggers are. I'll give you, a, I'll give you an example. For me, I call it the my popcorn my popcorn effect, right? When I get the p -p 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 and I get really excited, I know that that's something positive and beneficial that is going to happen for me, to me, or around me. 
uh, when I get the roller coaster gut, you know, when you go over the dip and your stomach goes, Vroom! when I get that, I know that something is coming up that's probably likely to be challenging or something that I need to be aware of. Um, so that's the, you know, the gut sense. Something told me how many times, and those of you that are probably around my age will probably have heard your mum say those words about a million times throughout your life path, you know, in regards to all various different things. Uh, I heard, you know, like sometimes you hear, don't do that, or do this, or move, go, and you're like, okay, who was that? Or sometimes you'll hear somebody calling your name right? Uh, this is akin to that whole thing, you know, sometimes you have somebody on your mind for days at a time and then they'll phone you and say, look, you know, I'm going through it or this is happening or this is happening. And you're like, oh, you know what? I should have called them or whatever. I mean, this was me in the early days. Now, you know, when it comes, I just answer because I'm so used to it. So I'll just phone people up and say, what's going on with you? Or, you know, like, what are you, you know, what's happening in your life at the moment? All sorts, phone calls, emails, text messages. I will just send them randomly. And I think, well, I'd say nine times out of 10, usually 10 times out of 10, people just are like, yeah, you know, I, I actually was going to call you or I needed to talk to you about something. So I just go with it. And I think the more you trust it, the more it builds and grows and the more your confidence builds and grows with it and in it. Um, I knew I didn't like them. This is a very common one. You know, sometimes you meet someone and you think, I don't like you. And you can't pinpoint what it is because you're like, they've been nothing but nice. You know, they've introduced themselves, but you just, there's something about that person and you're like, mm-mm, my spirit don't sit right with this one. Mm-mm, right? <laughs> like, seriously, it's, again, same. That's that, you know, that intuition. And then there's world events. Um, this is a common one for a lot of people. It's usually dreams. Um, I did a, a lot of looking at the, uh, you know, some of the bigger disasters that we've had over the last 10 years and found that a lot of people, a lot of people have dreamt world events, um, you know, and people, some of them as well, people that don't necessarily even consider themselves spiritual, you know, so really interesting stuff, you, you know, when you think about it as that way. So um, the other thing about this as well, as we've become uh, more highly or supposedly more highly evolved, I'm not entirely sure about that with current world affairs, but hey ho, we've become a lot less concerned with survival, right? So what happens to those gifts when there isn't, you know, a, a massive drought that's going to take you out or, you know, there isn't some other cataclysmic event or, you know, when your daily and, you know, general needs are consistently met and very easily, you have time or rather those gifts then start to, maybe that's why they've become dormant. That's definitely a possibility. Um, and, but also, it kind of in a way refines itself. So you start to, to, to pick up on different things, like who's gonna call you, like what's happening with whoever, um, how you can see things go, are gonna play out, you know, like it's almost like you have like a vision and then you see it like happen in front of you. And so I've had really small ones, like, you know, just down to the color of the cup that people are wearing and it, uh, wearing, the, uh, you know, holding. Um, some just some some that have made me chuckle because I'm like okay there was obviously nothing in it for me to see that but I saw it anyway and it's still like that's so bloody cool like you know it just I, I, I'm such a geek when it comes to this stuff anyway um, so those who can see and sense far ahead or the future are called psychic but what if you have that ability and you're with very little or no training, you know, and, and a lot of people on this path tended to have manifested this stuff either around five or six. It usually is between four and eight, I think. And then from uh, 11 to, say, sort of like 15, 16, and usually in response to some big sort of stressful event that was taking place in their environment, in their lives. Um, this is why a lot of intuitives and empaths and stuff have um, come from traumatic backgrounds or pasts. It's, you know, and very often those things are what trigger those, uh, those abilities, which is what, you know, I mean, that again is for a whole nother video, but 
um, what does that mean? You know, you're a natural psychic or you're a, a natural intuitive, or maybe you're a prodigy, you know, and, and we all are. This is the thing, we all have these abilities. How developed they are, how powerful they are, it's a sliding scale. Not everybody can run a marathon. Not everybody can run 100, 100 meters in you know 10 seconds. Even if they were trained, they would never be able to run it in that time. That comes down to so many other factors, you know? And it's the same with psychic awareness and abilities. Um, in terms of intuition, some really interesting uh, phenomena and studies around uh, um, soldiers and stuff who will say, you know, like been to various different tours on all sorts of stuff. They'll get to a field and say, I'm not going in there. And we'll just freeze and stand and say, I am not going in. And then all of a sudden, well, not all of a sudden, but over time they come to realize that there's a, a landmine buried that nobody even knew about. Right. And this is what I mean, this intuition, this ability to perceive or recognize danger. And when we're not in those situations because of the modern world that we live in so much, it then starts to reach for higher ideals, for bigger and broader information that is more important to us uh, with the lives that we live. I mean, that's a big part of what I believe, you know, but again, that's just me. Um, I mean, and here as well, so your psychic abilities, clear audience, when you hear things, you know, when you hear people speaking to you, uh, in some ways similar to mediumship, um, because obviously a lot of uh, mediums hear the spirits talk to them, um, but clear audience is more about clear healing, so he hearing, sorry, which is where you can literally hear, like, you know, don't do that, or um, do this, or, you know, play the lottery on that day, or, you know, all that sort of stuff. Uh, clairvoyance, clear sight, right? When you can see pictures, events, things, and that's how it happens for me very often. Um, I will see things like movies or pictures play out in my head. Um, I think this is why a lot of people loved Charmed, you know, because when they saw how Phoebe's premonitions took place, they were like, oh my gosh, it's like that for me. There was, I've actually come across so many people that have said to me, it's kind of weird, isn't it? How it's, you know, it's a very accurate portrayal. Um, you know, in in her respect, maybe not, you know, freezing time and all the rest of it. Um, right in the timelines, however, with Tower and all the re and uh, FLP, totally different story. Uh, but again, that's for another video. <laughs> um, clairsentience, this is another thing. And this is very much an empathic gift. When you can feel other people's emotions, when you can uh, perceive how they feel, when you feel for them. Empaths are the type of people who will cry at things that, you know, it's it's like it's fiction, there's nobody actually being hurt, but the thought that that could be happening to somebody, very, very stressful for them, um, you know, and very often, one thing that I've found with the clairsentience is when you get that feeling, it tends to then produce images. So it's kind of like it works in that way. Uh, clear cognizance, uh, clear knowing, you know, that just sense of when people ask you a question, on a subject that you've never studied, but you just know the answer. That's awesome, right? And very often, I was reading a, um, a, an article on this that someone said that um, they, they might not have studied or researched it, but because the person asking the question has, they're literally psychically picking that information out of the other person and it just comes to them. How cool is that, right? I just... This stuff really, really astounds me. And this isn't even half of it. I mean, I could do like a seven, eight, nine part video on this. And actually, uh, for those of you that don't know, Nico from Scarlet Moon, we did a video on the Grand Conjunction that's coming up. Um, I'm actually going to ask him to weigh in on this with me. I think we're going to do another video because I know he's got some amazing stuff uh, on this. So this leads me to um, a another big question. Are women more psychic than men? Now, naturally, I would say no, uh, but naturally, I am a fairly effeminate and um, totally in touch with my, you know, my uh, feminine yin uh, energy, right? I'm totally in touch with all of that because I'm completely aware of myself. Um, some people would argue that's why I'm more intuitive. Uh, I don't actually, it's not so much that I disagree. I think yes and no. 
And I think the reason being is because women tend to pay more attention to, the, to their intuition. Women have that energy that is naturally accepting. And in order for your intuition and your psychic ability to peak, you have to be open. You have to be accepting. You have to be able to yield. This isn't about weakness. It's not about, you know, but being able to yield, being able to accept, to just allow things to be and to come to you. Uh, that's something that women are naturally very, very good at. They, you know, they can ride anything out. I mean, gosh, I can only imagine, you know, giving birth, right? And, and look at that, mind blowing. Uh, they also tend to be more open. Um, so that's kind of that whole thing. And um, there is this debate going on at the moment that I think was actually started from the American Horror Story. It's like, it's a TV show, guys. Um, you know, are, are women more, sp more spiritual, psychic, and, and magically powerful? No, they just have their own set of mysteries and gifts, uh, you know, and men have their own as well. Um, and a good example of that, uh, men would have used it for different things. Women would have used it for healing or for knowing if something was wrong or out of place or, you know, all the rest of it. Men would have used it to know where the animals were going to be, where we could find water so that we can survive, uh, you know, all of that sort of stuff. So, you know, sometimes you really just take it down to base level and ask yourself, OK, what do I actually feel about that question? You know, uh, so for a, uh, intuitive training. So um, I'm going to make a video on uh, just a few simple exercises to train your your intuition. Um, so that's kind of leading me to the end of it, which is great. Um, yeah, I mean, so one thing that you can probably try, um, and that I say to people as well is, Try to extend your physical senses into your intuition, almost as like a projection. And I know this is gonna sound really odd, but try to see around a corner. And obviously you can't see around a corner because we have that limited vision that I talked about in the beginning. But you can feel, right? Try to project your energy around the corner and see or pick up is somebody coming around the corner. Uh, you know, there's all that sort of stuff. Or if there's somebody else in the house and you're in one room, try to extend your senses to see if you can pick them up. Is that energy there? All of that intuition, psychic ability, this is how you train that stuff. Uh, and again, like I said, you know, natural ability and flair and all the rest of it will definitely come into it. Um, and yeah, finally, one thing that I want to leave you with. I mean, like I said, I could go into so much more with this. Um, an intuition and psychic ability prayer. So, powers of my soul and mind, I invite you in. Spirit and flesh combined, let my intuition begin. Open now my willing ears, let me walk the path of seers. Um, and leave you on this final note. And this is about uh, integrity and honesty. This builds into that. It's very, very important. When I was 14, I had the pleasure of reading an amazing book called Cormac the Seers. And by then I'd already started to manifest, right? So, um, and one line that I read in that book was that if a seer told a lie or an untruth when it came to their gift or questions that they were asked in that respect, it would diminish their power to see. So when I read cards for people, when I pick things up for people, you can trust that that's coming from a place of honesty and integrity. And why? Because I believe it is a slap in the face of the divine for the gift that you've been given not to deliver the information as it comes to you. And this is really, really important for me. So uh, when it comes to this path and all of this stuff, you've got to walk it and there will be times where you think oh i can't say that or Ooh, you know <laughs> really you want me to say that or that's coming up and you know what every time i've trusted it every time i've trusted it it's never lied to me yet <coughs> So keep that in mind, right? Your your ability to see relies on trust and uh, and integrity with you investing those in your gift and the you know wherever that source is for you, um, and and in, and vice versa. You know, it's it's a it's a connection, it's a relationship that you have with your intuition and your gift. So this is uh, the video on intuition and psychic ability. I know it's a long one. 
Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope it speaks to you in some way, shape or form. I will say that prayer for you once more and then you can go back and rewind it if you should so choose. Powers of my soul and mind, I invite you in. Spirit and flesh combined, let my intuition begin. Open now my willing ears, let me walk the path of seers. It's not an easy one, beautiful people, but it is totally worth it. And it's so, so rewarding. I wish you all of the best. I wish you an abundance of all of that good stuff. Take care and I'll see you soon for another segment.